And we are back. Hello, and uh, I believe we've got a first in the ASL. Uh, this is Zelnaga Caverns. Um, but not in not a first for the ASL, because he's been in all three seasons. It is our green Protoss spawning up in the top right-hand corner. It is Lucian. Representing nobody for but himself in this uh, yeah. PvP. Uh, in the bottom left corner, uh, he's been getting a lot of... Uh, a lot of fan support through that Twitch chat, so hopefully we see more of that. He is representing 440 Gaming, Cold Flame. Uh, uh, <laughs> Zelnaga's always struck me as a pretty cold map, so I should fucking be... hate Zelnaga. Really? <laughs> yes, I, I okay, no, it. I'll be honest, I hate Zelnaga. I hate Zelnaga. I hate playing on it, but I like I like it. Look, I, watching, Starcraft, watching Starcraft, I can I'll watch I'll watch Starcraft on on any map. But but oh, playing yeah. on it what is about, a completely different animal. Even that one with the rising lava. Haven't you know what? I'm a I'm a little I'm actually a bit of a Starcraft baby. I've only been playing it for about a year and a half, so I have I don't know the rising lava level. It was uh, well there, there's two. There's one that was made for um for a Red Bull uh, battlegrounds where they used crazy maps, which is actually where habitation came from. Oh. Uh, and one of their maps had some bridges that separated the map that had rise lava would rise for one minute ev in every three or something, and uh, just you couldn't cross it if you used it. Just cross obliterated it everything in its path. Yeah, it killed everything. Um, and then there's another one which is really rubbish, which is like a not actual multiplayer melee map. It's a economy mining game, race, but. Anyway, Lucian's actually added on a very fast second gate to this, so I think we're going to see some aggression coming out from him, especially, and he's crawling his uh, warp gate, so there's a good chance we'll see some kind of aggression. Yeah, Cold no, uh, yeah, Cold sorry. Actually, also second gate, but slightly yeah, no, no probes on the map throwing down any four pylons. Now Lucian's sending out an extra probe, um, and there are actually, yeah, like you said earlier, two gases taken from Cold Flame, and he's got his second gas up and running as well. Um, Stalker coming out now for Lucian after the first Zealot. So uh, we'll see what these two guys are going into. Um, both of them are, are uh, boosting out some some Stalkers. So uh, definitely going to see some one base Protoss play, which to be honest uh, is is can get decently exciting and I'm not too worried about. But this Mothership Core is going to actually come over Ooh. right over and see this this probe. So pretty good yeah. pickup from uh, Cold Flame. Yeah, pretty nice. I think uh, Lucian actually went for a 10 gate and is now, pardon me, is now going into... Uh, three gate all in, but Cold Flame. I don't know Cold Flame actually is going to have quite a lot of trouble dealing with this because he hasn't been chronic beast in his warp gates, and he's only on two warp gates as it is. So he's going to have a lot fewer units to be able to hold this off than Lucian will. Yeah, he's going to have to pull probes. Uh, now he sees the stalkers, <laughs> and uh, if he and loses this... another score, he won't even have a uh, folk nova charge. Yeah, the good thing is he does have this little gap for him to hit, and I don't think Lucian's going to yeah, overextend yeah. himself and, and, and go chasing after it. Um, Lucian knows if it hits okay. well enough, he's going to get it. But there are three stalkers now for Cold Flame, and this is three versus two. One zealot, though, and if he micros perfectly, you know, Lucian's going to lose his battle. Yeah, but with the extra warp in, that's yeah, going to be a big the warp sort of advantage for Lucian, and uh, he should be able to push this back. Yeah, I think Lucian knew he was going to have those. Obviously, he was baiting him in a little bit. So now we've got four, you know, five stalkers on the field. Uh, he might get the mothership core. It's so close. He's going to get it oh for sure, goodness, right? Gonna, yeah. One more shot. Yeah. That's huge. That's, that's huge. almost game ending. Yeah, yeah, the big uh, way Legacy of Os yeah, the big way Hearth of Swarm changed PvP was that Mothership Core coming in meant that there was a defensive advantage in situations like this. But now, Cold Flame, Lucian just has more Stalkers, and there's no way for Cold Flame to deal with that. He can pull probes off, but Lucian just can just kite back and pull the probes. So actually, he's got enough of Sword Advantage that he doesn't need to. He can just keep on trading with these Stalkers to Cold Flame. Now, Cold Flame just has one Stalker left. All the probes are coming off the line. And this is this is his last ride. He's got to yeah, got to fight this. Oh, I nice talk drone! About drill. something Captain real quick <laughs> that I think this is this is a little bit, uh, and that is something we haven't really discussed is a little bit of um, maybe tournament uh, nerves kicking in here. Um, there's a nice force field going down. It's not going to be infinite. Um, I think the game is at this point a little bit, pat you know, it's pretty much one for Lucian. Um, if, in, but I think if you look at the, I mean, there's a a, a Stargate. Um, but this is pretty much one for Lucian. I think what this came down to is Cold Flame read it, and then he just kind of had his units in bad positions, and he kind of overextended a little bit. And I think yeah. he's nervous. I think he's. We're gonna see more. Yeah, there's the GG called. Um,
All right, welcome back. We're on Daybreak. We have the second game of this PvP series, uh, second matchup of Group E of our Challenger League, which, to remind you, is Diamond and Masters. Uh, and we have uh, this series once again continuing on Daybreak. So getting right into these player introductions, we are spawning in the top right corner of Daybreak. Uh, down one game to nil against his opponent, but he is repping that goldish color Protoss player, Cold Flame. And his opponent in opposite positions down the bottom left-hand corner of Daybreak, spawning in green. Also as Protoss, it is Lucian. Yeah, taking game one pretty handedly. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a... Uh, it's a bit of um, a push there from three stalkers, and we do have a nice little uh, little ASL graphic here coming into play. We're gonna we're gonna zoom in Ooh. on that little little logo and show everyone. Do we? Yeah. It? Yes. Yes. Where is it? There it is. So um, we do have um, Lucian once again spot on the bottom left. Took game one pretty handily um, with those uh, with this, basically a three stalker push and, and just kind of making stalkers. Um, this map doesn't lend itself to that sort of play, so let's hear some let's hear some cast predictions and cast predictions coming out of you. I think Lucian's gonna go for that proxy stargate. I Oh, proxy twilight council. What do I know? Um, proxy twilight council. Hidden. So we could hidden get fun. yeah, hidden. We could get your uh, proxy dark shrine. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think it's gonna be proxy dark shrine. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a couple of builds lately where they research uh, Blink at the same time as doing uh, a Dark Shrine build, and it's a little later. Um, and I don't think it necessarily hits one base. So uh, mm. if he is going to stay on this one base, it is going to probably end up being a Dark Shrine. Um, because it, it's it's a little bit funny to me on Daybreak, though, to hide your tech. Um, because I feel like you've got enough of a spawning position, and you'll probably have units come out. And there's the confirmation on the, uh, the Dark Shrine. So Lucian... Yeah. Um, coming through with the uh, the DT. And this is a little bit of kind of the same thing that we saw out of the first series where uh, you've got a one-game lead and you're going to force your opponent because we saw on the TVZ, um, what was what was the, the Terran player? Uh, Canary tried to force Captain Maru's hand and was like, I'm going to yeah. proxy, I'm going to 8-8 you and we're going to see what you can do. This wow, is essentially the, uh, the same thing uh, and he's going to go ahead and hit some DT Russian. <laughs> yeah, but Cold Flame has other plans. He's been, uh, yeah, he's been rushing out his warp gate a bit more and uh, moving across the map with the stalkers now. The DTs aren't going to be ready for a little while for Lucian, so it all depends now how much Lucian can hold off Cold Flame's pressure before he gets his DTs. Because once he gets DTs, Cold Flame's pressure is over. He's got to run his units back across the map and he's got to start getting uh, getting defenses at home for the DTs. He's going to get Stargate, which we're going to be able to get an Oracle with for detection. But right now, Cold Flame is inside Lucian's base, and Lucian has money to afford DTs, and Warp Gate is just about to finish. And once it does, then Lucian will be just fine. The unfortunate thing here is that now you're going to have to use D uh, DTs in defense of your base, right? And you, yeah. you never want to show that early of a tech. Oh, he's going to set the pylon. There's going to be no defense here. He's going to get it. The this DTs is... come out. Oh, he did. Two okay, DTs he did. He, I see. Yeah, D two DTs are out. Um, but he does deep power. That's that's always a bit of a pain, especially since he yeah. has 55 minerals, and he's not going to get those minerals back oh, for God. a long time. But now he's using those DTs as defensive DTs, and Cold Flame has got enough time and distance to make his entire way back across, and his Oracle's already out. So yeah. um, coming back, Cold Flame, massive advantage right now because he knows exactly what he's up against. The tech tree, the tech advantage is gone because Lucene had to had to warp them in defensively. So Cold Flame, um, you know, pushing out. Essentially, you know, doing the right thing at the right time. Uh, maybe a bit luckily, maybe a little bit of star sense. Can't really say I'm not in his head, but of course it worked out absolutely perfectly for him because now look at the position he's in. Yeah, and uh, because those that pylon had to be rebuilt before uh, Lucian could uh, rewarp any DTs, he couldn't just warp in defensively a little bit later. It was so, so much later because he had to wait for the pylon again. The... There's, yeah, there's absolutely nothing. He's got the Archons, which are very, very strong. Can't be counted out. But, I mean, you don't really want to be making DTs out of Archons. You wouldn't be making them out of High Templar. But Lucian has taken one out of each gas, so he's easing back on the gas a little bit. And I guess he's got to be planning some kind of uh, follow-up push for this. Yeah, no matter how good Archons are, if you have enough uh, stalkers and, you know, a unit control like the archon is not going to be enough yeah. like one archon versus six stalkers your, your stalkers are going to be able to win so oh, yeah. 
Um, I, you know, Lucian obviously making an Archon because he, you know, he, his DTs were were had oh, okay. as it were. So you know what else is he gonna do? But the Oracle makes its way into the main and it's gonna start picking up a couple kills. There's only one stalker to deal with that. How many kills is he on? He's on five kills and he's got the pull drones. This is almost like GG worthy, perfectly. Yeah. Um, Basically, a build order win uh, for Lucian, but got to give it him credit as opposed to playing it way too safe and like staying back and going like, oh, you know what? I can't. Eleven kills in that Oracle, oh. by the way. As and opposed it gets to out. as opposed to playing it safe, he was like, no, I'm gonna push. I'm gonna play the way I know how to play, and you know what? We're, if I if I lose again, so be it. Live by the sword, die by the sword. And I like that mentality a lot. Yeah, Lucian's moving forwards now with uh, one DT, one Archon, and one Zella, but absolutely nothing doing. They're, all of these units are going to die. I don't think they're even going to kill one of Cold Flame's units. Maybe they're going to kill the Zealot, but... Yeah, I think this is Lucian's last push. Cold Flame has uh, Nexus and GG. Hello, and we are back on Aklan Wastes. And our first player spawning up in the top left-hand corner from Team 440 Gaming. It is the yellow Protoss Cold Flame. And his opponent, spawning in the bottom right, representing nobody but his fine self. He is a, a slightly cheesy player, slightly all in thus far, but nonetheless... Showing off some great play, your green Protoss, Lucian. And already he is looking to continue that with two assimilators very, very quickly before his cybercon comes up even. And he's put three probes in one of them, and I sort of expect him, because of that, to put three probes in the other. So we're going to see a lot of gas coming up from Cold Flame. And a slightly more standard move has gone for double gas as well, but with only two in each, which gives him... A lot more versatility, a slightly more finely tuned build. And yeah, Lucian has put, got uh, three probes in each assembly, so, so he's going gas heavy as crazy. And I sort of wonder what he's going to do with all this. You got any ideas? Um, so just to go over what um, Trigonal was saying, just because there is a, a little bit of a musical introduction, I don't, intro after uh, playing Trucks, so I don't know if you could hear it. Um, we went into heavy gas right after um, Gates. You could walk us through it right again. Uh, yeah, sure. Lucian went into really, really heavy gases, straight out his gateways before his cyber core went down. And uh, with three in each, that gives him quite a bit more gas than Cold Flame, who actually started out with two in each and has put three in each. Uh, I would guess straight after the cyber core finish, because that's the more usual way to time to do it. And this is going to mean Lucian's, as you can see, he's banked up a ton more gas. He's got uh, about 200 gas to Cold Flames when I started the sentence, 100. Uh, but Cold Flame has started to spend that gas on uh, on a couple of Stalkers. And Lucian's still banking out. He still has a couple of Stalkers, but I think this is the same three-gate build we saw beforehand. Oh, he's trapped yeah, a probe. Yeah, so, so, well, it's a little different, of course, because it's Akalon Way, so there's such a long spawning distance. I mean, of course, it's the same. You know, if he throws on the same build, I would be a little uh, wary. Cold Flame is looking like he might be hiding some tech because in the, in the top of his... Uh, his uh, natch or his bane rather, he threw down a, a pylon there in the top right, uh, and uh, he, it's a stargate. So uh, we're gonna see more stargate play come out of cold flame. And you know what, cold flame I think has done uh, essentially the same thing every time. It just didn't work out for him so much. Uh, but we have a uh, pylon, a forward pylon getting thrown down, uh, and Lucian's stargate is actually finishing up really soon. As well as these three stalkers coming out, gonna meet the first one and say hello. And so you know what, Lucian's got the advantage in this engagement at least until the yeah. mothership core shows up. Yeah, and uh, both Stalkers are going to dance backs and forwards. Cold Flame Stalker has actually taken a little bit of hull damage while Lucian's are all on full health. So that's going to matter pretty much continually on certainly for the early game. And uh, the Stargate for Lucian, a little bit faster, means that Oracle is already on the way. An, an Oracle coming out for Cold Flame as well. If that had been a Phoenix, it would have been really, really good for him because uh, Phoenix is just so good against the Oracles. Just an instant hard counter. Yeah, that's pro probably the hardest counter in the game. Uh, and uh, I don't know. The Oracle means that uh, Lucian has to stay at home, so it's it's still good. Yeah, but, uh, Lucian's yeah. not necessarily staying at home. Most of his his forces are out on the map right now. So um, if he is going to go ahead and, uh, but I mean, look, Lucian's Oracle is going to show up earlier. But it's not as if to say you know your Oracle is going to get sent home if you know yeah. you have another Oracle on the base. So uh, you know, Cold Flame's Oracle is on the map as well, just a little later. 
Um, but what is Lucian going to do with these stalkers? He's going to push up. So if Cold Flame goes ahead and dedicates this Oracle to the Mineral Line, you know, Cold Flame is going to be able to get a shit ton of Mineral kill uh, mineral Worker kills. Um, there are not enough stalkers to deal with Lucian's stalkers. So these stalkers are going to march right up into the main. Um, and they're going to be targeting the Mothership Cord. So there's no floats on ever charge uh, for Cold Flame anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, Cold Flame did luckily for him he manage did to get, get it off. Yeah, he was able to get off, it off uh, to start with. But once that 60 seconds has expired, he better hope that Immortal's finished. But if it is, oh, actually, Lucian has three swords oh. at home. Fantastic oh, check out Lucian's main. Check out Lucian's main. What's going yeah. on? That Oh, there are Stalkers back home, though. Ooh. Yeah, so only, I think, maybe two Stalkers killed. Sorry, two uh, probes three, killed by that three. Oracle. Yeah, yeah. So two really nice like that, Yeah. And back across the map, Lucian's managed to cancel the natural, really. and now he's just he's waiting until that photon overcharge wears out. But when it does, Colfin's got an immortal and a void ray. I don't think Lucian's going to be able to take this with the stalkers, and he does yeah, back up Lucian, very wisely. Tail between the legs, come home now, Lucian. Um, I think actually both players have kind of settled. If Lucian gets home, instead he's going to take a cup, a bit more damage than he needs to. He doesn't need to do this, and he certainly doesn't need to lose his mother court mothership. You no, know, he's got enough energy for a recall or something. Like he mishandled this situation a little bit, in my opinion. Um, he does not have the uh, available forces to deal with that, and you know, um, the Void Ray out as well as the Immortal, like just recall out of there. Instead, he loses the Mothership Core, and uh, you know, not necessarily the best position. Yeah, losing the Oracle as well, and uh, the rest of his Stalkers. It looks this, like this does not look like a game-ending position, but he's turning it into one. Yeah, he is. He just all his his units seem to be in just slightly the wrong place the whole time. Finishing up this pylon as well, letting it finish. You can't warp in and expect like an extra stalker to take so many more stalkers. Yeah, GG's call.